We're now going to simulate a one-on-one -on -one head on engagement using planar kinematics and proportional navigation. Okay, pursuer and target initially at the same altitude. Target has velocity VT headed straight for the pursuer. Pursuer has velocity VP but a heading error. So the pursuer needs to make a course correction for collision. We're going to look at pure pronav. We're going to look at true pronav. The navigation gain is going to be 3. The heading error is going to be negative 20 degrees. The pursuer velocity is initially 3,000 feet per second. Now this is going to be constant in the pure pronav sim, but for true pronav, because AP true is not perpendicular to VM, VP will change. So in general, it's an initial condition. Target velocity is 1,000 feet per second. And the initial separation between the bodies is 30,000 feet. So our first objective is just to make some observations between the pure and true pronav results, and we'll compare those with our expectations. Then we want to explore the effect of different navigation gains on pursuer trajectory and how much control effort is used. And finally, we want to quantify and compare control effort over the entire engagement. First, true pronav. The following simulation was integrated with 4th order runga kutta with a time step size of 1 one hundredth of a second. This is altitude versus downrange for the pursuer in blue and target in red. The heading error causes the pursuer to drop 2,000 feet below the target before the true pronav acceleration commands correct the course to cause collision. This view follows the pursuer along its trajectory. The acceleration command is the black arrow and it's perpendicular to the line of sight direction or the range vector which is denoted by the black dashed line. The pursuer velocity vector is in dark blue with its initial heading error of minus 20 degrees. The light blue line is the trajectory of the pursuer. We can see that the acceleration command remains perpendicular to the line of sight direction throughout the engagement and the acceleration command is decreasing as time increases. The fact that the acceleration is decreasing implies that the pursuer is achieving a collision course or a collision triangle. In this final frame, the acceleration command is the opposite direction because VC changes sign when the pursuer passes the target. That is, this final frame is the instant at which the pursuer has just passed the target according to our time step size. As the pursuer passes, line of sight rate becomes non-zero again so that a finite acceleration command is made. How close do we get to the target? This is a plot of range versus time where range is on a log scale. Note that range is monotonically decreasing to a minimum value. This minimum value is the missed distance. Theoretically, for this true pronav sim, miss distance should be zero. But because we're numerically integrating, we have integration error that causes finite miss in the simulation. That miss is about eight inches in this instance. If we reduce the time step size, the miss decreases further. After the miss, range of course increases because the pursuer passes the target. So let's take a look at the moments just before collision. Right about there. We can clearly see the collision triangle. Line of sight angle does not change as time increases, at least as far as we can visually observe in this plot. This is an indication that the pursuer is indeed on a collision course for this simulation. Let's take a look at things from the vantage of the pursuer just moments before collision. So here you can see a small amount of lead and the range vectors spacing out ever so slightly almost becoming a static image just milliseconds before collision indicating that there is a collision triangle and then the frame ends on the time step just past the pursuer. At each time step in the simulation, the true pronav command is updated. 
if we plot acceleration versus time, we get this curve. Starting at about 9 g's, the true prone F command monotonically decreases to 0 g's at about 10.6 seconds. What's happening is that the true prone F guidance law is enforcing a collision triangle. This process involves driving lambda dot to 0, meaning that AP true is also driven to 0. Now, after the miss is when the pursuer passes the target. This causes an impulsive increase in the acceleration command. It's driven by the change in sign in VC and lambda dot quickly increasing as the pursuer passes the target. Now pure pronav. The trajectories look similar. Following the pursuer, note that the pure pronav command is perpendicular to the pursuer velocity vector. As with true pronav, we see the acceleration decrease as time increases. And as with true pronav, we see a collision triangle being established as the range vectors become fixed with respect to one another as the pursuer approaches the target. Before proceeding, pause the video and see if you can answer these questions. Let's explore the pronav law for various values of the navigation gain. Here are the trajectories for true pronav on top and pure pronav on bottom for 20 degrees heading air for five different values of the navigation gain. For both laws, the larger the navigation gain, the faster the course correction as evidenced by the shorter distance taken from the start to the intercept. Here's pure pronav for three different values of n just moments before collision. Let's start with the left-hand side, n equals 2. Initially, lead is negative, becomes positive. The distance between the range vectors is continuously changing, and the lead angle of the velocity vector is continuously changing as well. This indicates that a collision triangle is not achieved, but the pursuer acceleration achievable in the sim is unbounded. So large accelerations are being commanded at the very end, and the pursuer is assumed to achieve them. Therefore, in that case, miss is still very small. n equals 3, we've seen before. But note that compared to n equals 2, much less movement in the range vectors, much shallower lead angle, and much less change in lead angle over the final moments of the engagement. And for n equals 5, we see virtually no change. It's already on a collision triangle. We know this is on a collision triangle because the distance between the range vectors is not changing and the lead angle is not changing in the pursuer. This is consistent with our understanding up to this point. The greater the value of n, the faster we achieve a collision triangle and the less control effort that must be made for course correction late on in the engagement. What about acceleration for each value of the navigation gain? Well, here it is for true on the left and pure on the right. Five different values of n starting from 1.5 to 5. Having come just from pure pronav, let's take a look at the right-hand chart first. Remember that for n equals 2, that's this red line, we saw continuous increase in the lead angle up to the point of collision with the target. That's reflected in this exponentially increasing acceleration command. Because acceleration is continuously being commanded, collision course is not achieved. For a sufficient value of n, it's not the case. Instead, we apply enough 
upfront control effort so that later on less control effort is needed. The same type of trend happens for true PRONAV for low value of n unbounded acceleration command. Here for n equal 2, interestingly, it's just about constant. But still, late on in the engagement, all the way to the final time, significant acceleration is being commanded so that the pursuer must not be on a collision triangle. For n greater than 2, more efforts being applied early on so that later on less effort is needed for collision and acceleration goes to zero indicating there is a collision triangle. Alright, let's take a break and check your understanding. Now let's take a look at control effort over the entire engagement. To quantify this, we're simply going to integrate the square of the acceleration command. Evaluating control effort for various n for both true and pure PRONAV, we make a table. Let's take a look at true. The highest control effort is for n equals 1.5. For 2, it decreases. For 3, it decreases. For 4, it increases. And then continues to moderately increase as n increases. So there is a control effort minimizing value of n for true PRONAV. And the same trend occurs for pure, but the minimum is at n equals 4. So what value of n is best? For small values of n, we saw AP diverge late in the engagement. This will exceed the control effector limits of the platform. And because there was no collision course, we were constantly required to achieve larger and larger acceleration. So when the pursuer stops achieving that, significant miss may be incurred. For large values of n, we saw large acceleration command early in the engagement. Same concern about control effector limits. And while we won't cover it here, as n increases, the homing loop can actually become unstable as other subsystems are introduced back into the homing loop. And we become sensitive to other sources of noise present in those subsystems. In textbooks, a typical range for n is reported to be between 3 and 5. And that happens to lie where the control effort minimizing values of n exist in this example. Here's a final check on your understanding for this last slide on control effort. For the problem set, repeat this analysis for a target pulling a constant 5G acceleration. This is Simulation of Engagements with PRONAV, Head-On Engagement, Missile Guidance Fundamentals, Section 3, Module 3.